a taxpayers. It's no surprise that the federal income tax system here in the U.S. is overly complicated. But you know what's not complicated? That's exactly right. You read my mind. How to use toilet paper. You see, virtually all of us know how to use TP. In fact, I bet some of you are actually using the bathroom right now as you're watching this. That's right, Chris. I know you're using the bathroom. Now, as a side note, I really hope someone named Chris just happened to be watching this video while using the bathroom and I just completely blew their mind. But going back to the topic of taxes, you see here in the U.S. we have what's known as a progressive system. And progressive systems have things called marginal tax rates or tax brackets. They're the same thing. You can think of them like a set of stairs where you walk up to one and you reach a step. And once you're done with that step, then you move on to the next one. And then once you're done with that step, then you move on to the next one and rinse and repeat. Now, currently at the time of recording this video, the ranges of marginal tax rates range from 10% all the way up to 37%, meaning the most that you can get taxed on any given dollar for income tax is 37%. Now, you might be saying, but Trey, that's not right. I pay upwards of 40, 50% in taxes, not 37. And well, you very well could be right. But keep in mind, I'm only talking about federal income tax because not only is it usually the most burdensome, but it's often, often the most misunderstood. You see, we have federal income tax, and depending on how you source your income, there may be uh, social, social uh, self-employment taxes on top of it, and depending on where you live and where you earn your money, you may have state and local taxes as well. So again, yeah, the total may be well above 37%, but again, we're only talking about, again, federal income tax. So looking at this toilet paper, let's say this represents a salary of $62,000 a year. Now, that may sound like a very odd number, but there's actually a very specific reason why I chose that number, and hopefully by the end of the video, it makes sense. Now, obviously, if you make less than 62,000, then the radius slash diameter of this roll would be thinner, and if you make more, then it's gonna look more wider, more like one of those like colossal rolls you find in a gas station bathroom. Now, specifically, this one I got here comes with like 200-ish uh, little squares, and well, if I do $62,000, then roughly each square is about just shy of 300 bucks. And that's gonna make more sense here very shortly. Now we need to understand what exactly does this $62,000 represent in terms of a filing status? Is this the income of a single person? Is this a married couple and their incomes combined is 62,000? Is this a single parent who maintains the upkeep of a house expenses? So head of household? Well. Just for argument's sake and just for ease of, you know, example's sake, let's assume this is just a single person's income. So again, not married, $62,000 in terms of wages, salaries, or whatever, and that's going to be our filing status is single. So you're probably sick of seeing my face by now, so let's switch to a hand cam and see exactly how this all works. Uh, all right, hand cam time. Now, obviously, if my career as an accountant ever foils, well, I'll just go into hand modeling. Now, in front of us is going to be some uh, percentages ranging from 0 up to 22%, and these are going to represent our tax brackets. Now, you might be saying, but Trey, didn't you just say that the largest tax bracket was 37% just like two minutes ago? And, well, you're accidentally correct. You see, the brackets here actually stopped at 22%, and it'll make sense here in a little bit. But, honestly, I didn't have all the brackets because, well, it would take up too much space. And the big thing is, if we understand how tax brackets work, you know, in the lower section, then we'll know how it works in the higher registers because, again, it's the same process at each bracket. Um, but probably most importantly is actually I spoke at a student event somewhat recently, and these were some, uh, like, visual aids that I had. So I just already had them printed up and, well, didn't have the time to, you know, go print other things new. So, again, these are just reused, uh, again, visual aids that I had at a at another event that I spoke about. But they didn't get toilet paper in there, so you actually get a much more um, a professional demonstration. Now, we've established that this roll of toilet paper here is representing a single tax filer uh, with a salary of $62,000. And again, that's gonna all come into very important play here because that's gonna help us determine our filing status, which again, is single for this instant. So, the question we need to ask ourselves is, do we pay tax on this full $62,000? And the answer is no. We actually don't pay the uh, full income tax on everything here. So again, we need to determine what exactly is taxable. And the best way to do this is to, I know it sounds kind of crazy, but do your taxes. But 
the better way to say it is let's go through the tax journey and see what, what each step, what the impact is. So at the very beginning of a tax return, it's going to be your, again, total gross income. This is going to be the sum of all your salaries and wages and uh, interest and dividends and all that fun stuff. And again, which is $62,000 in this situation. Now, the first thing we're going to hit is what is known as above the line deductions. These are deductions that you can take, whether you take the standard deduction or you itemize. Now, if those two sound pretty, you know, unfamiliar, that's okay. That's going to be the next step. So uh, above the line deductions can be things like uh, post-tax contributions to HSAs, certain retirement contributions, but probably the one that I personally see the most of on tax returns is student loan interest. So for example, let's say this taxpayer here had um, $5,000 in student loan payments throughout the, this entire tax year. Now, even though that they paid $5,000, the interest is only deductible. So let's say it was you know, $300 worth of deductions or interest, excuse me, which means that $300 could be deducted right up there on the tax return. Now, just for uh, simplicity's sakes, we're not going to do above line deductions because we're just going to go straight into what these, you know, each cards represent. So again, just know that there is something called above line deductions that could actually reduce your toilet paper size, hypothetically, but again, not for this example. So, we start with 62,000. We're going to assume we don't have any above line deductions available. And now we arrive at what is known as our AGI or adjusted gross income. Now, once you hit your AGI, you actually hit a fork in the road. And this is where you have one of two choices. You either take the standard deduction or you itemize. And this is a mutually exclusive decision, meaning that you can choose one, but you miss out on the other. So obviously, since these are deductions, we want to choose the one that is going to be higher because well, it just makes the most sense. Now, currently as of recording, the single, which again, we're assuming this is a single taxpayer, the single uh, standard deduction for 2024 is 14,600 bucks. And if you can see it down here, great. Again, if not, I'll probably overlay some text to you know help out because again, I've got like married filing jointly and head of household on here as well, which is not gonna be relevant to, again, this video. So again, what we're saying is that for a single person in 2024, the standard deduction is 14,600 bucks. Now, what's nice about the standard deduction is that's an amount just given to you based on your filing status. Now, it could go up a little bit depending on your age and or if you're considered blind, but again, our taxpayer is a young um, sightseeing person, so uh, the 14,600 is what they're entitled to. Now, we need to look at our itemized deductions to see does that amount surpass the 14,600? Because if the answer is yes, then we want to itemize because, well, we're allowed 16,000 or 14,600 because that's the standard amount given to you. But if your itemized deductions are greater, then let's choose that. So in this instance, let's assume that um, our taxpayer here, <coughs> uh, his itemized deductions totaled 13,000 bucks. Well, I would assume, you know, just given all the numbers that we work on, that 13,000 is less than 14,000, obviously. So we're gonna choose the standard deduction in this case. Well, the opposite's true. If we've looked at this person's individual or itemized deductions and it totaled, let's say 15,000 bucks, well, $15,000 is obviously more than 14,600. So in this case, we would take the itemized deductions. Now. Like I said, for hypothetical or just example sakes, let's just say this is this person's itemized deductions was less than the standard deduction. So in this case, we are going to figure out how much, or I'm sorry, we're gonna remove $14,600 worth of toilet paper because again, we don't pay tax on it. Now, each square again represents about 300 bucks. Um, I would assume this is somewhat close. I'm not exactly sure, but let's just assume for argument's sakes that that is. So we started with $62,000 and now we have $62,000 less the standard deduction amount, which I don't have the math in front of me, but I'm gonna have a running total over here just so that kind of guides you. So now we have this remaining amount for the rest of, again, the brackets. Hey, I know I literally just said I wasn't keeping a, um, a calculator in front of me, but I just went ahead and just did just so I can verbally tell you what's going on as well as having it show over here. So again, we started with 62,000. 
we're taking the standard deduction of 14,600, which means our toilet paper size now represents $47,400. So again, we've just exhausted our standard deduction. So we're done with this step. Now we're down or up to the 10% tax bracket. Now, for a single person expected for 2024, the bracket ranges from $0 up to 11,600 bucks is going to be taxed at 10%. So again, dollars zero through 11,600 is going to be taxed at 10%. So now that we've already exhausted our 0%, dollars zero through 11,600 is going to be taxed at 10%. So I'm gonna roll out roughly what would probably represent, again, 11,600 bucks and Let's just say that's about it. So again, this amount of toilet paper represents 11,600 because again, that is the span, the range of dollars that is taxable to an individual single person at the 10% bracket. So as of now, I have $35,800. Now again, just to walk you through it, this originally was $62,000. $14,600 is not taxed because that's our standard deduction. The next $11,600 is taxed at 10%. So now, since we've exhausted the 10% bracket, now we're up to the 12%. Now, this is where it gets a little tricky because it says, hey, dollars $11,601 through $47,150 is taxed at 12%. Now, I have a little cheat sheet because, well, I can't do the math off the top of my head, but that's $35,549 that is subject to 12%. Again, we're looking at it in steps. So again, we started with 62, a portion of it's gonna be not taxed, a portion's gonna be 10. And now that we're here, it's saying that dollars 11,601, and the reason why it's 11,601 is because we use the 11,600 dollar as the end point of our 10%. So now 11,601 is going to be the starting point for our 12% bracket. So again, the dollar range between, or the, the difference, I should say, between 11601 and 47150 is uh, $35,549. So this represents $35,800. I just said that this represents $35,000 and change. So pretty much the rest of this toilet paper roll is going to be subject to the 12% tax bracket. All right, there we go. That's a lot. Awesome. Now, again, doing some math, I am left with $251 left. Now remember, 62,000 less the standard deduction amount left me enough to start the 10%. The 10% range was eaten up. The 12% range was again used up. So what is left is, well, a little less than 300 bucks, which would be represented by this last piece of square here. Now, again, how exactly is this last little bit going to be taxed? Well, should it be 0%? No, we've already, again, used that up. Can't be 10% because, well, we've already exhausted that. We just exhausted the 12%. So, well, like I said at the very beginning of the video, it's just like working on steps. You complete one step and you go to the next. So this little bit is now in the 22% tax bracket. Now, this is exactly why I wanted to actually use that $62,000 um, example, because this is where um, people get really nasty surprised, surprise, excuse me, because again, you're paying taxes, you start out at 10%, then you do a little bump up to 12%, but if you think about it, oh my gosh, you're going from 12% and you're jumping up to 22%, a lot of people get really shocked because if you're, let's say, uh, you're withholding your taxes at, let's just say hypothetically 12%, just for argument's sake, then you're, you can expect to receive a tax refund because, well, if you're withholding at 12%, your effective tax rate is actually going to be a little less, which I might get into here in a little bit, because again, you've got some that's not taxed, you have some tax at 10%, so that brings the average down. But once you start putting in the 22%, because going from a 12% to a 22%, that's a 10% jump. So man, again, if you think of it like a set of stairs, 
this is just like a little boop. But then you come over here, that's gotta be one that you gotta put your hips into to get up to. And technically, this is the largest jump in our current uh, tax breaks, or tax bracket, excuse me, is going from 12 to 22. That's a 10% hike. The largest hike is 8%, which is again further up, which again, we won't get into. But the reason I wanted to use the uh, $62,000 example, because for a single person expected for 2024, that's gonna start breaking you into the 22% tax bracket. Now let's take this a step further, because let's assume that, again, that $62,000 salary was what you made during the year, but now it's at the end of the year, it's after Christmas, and your boss comes up to you and tells you, hey, I see how you've already calculated your income taxes for $62,000, that's great, but um, you did such a good job with the company for this year, we're going to give you a bonus of $1,000. Now, the question becomes, how is this $1,000 going to be taxed? Well, again, we've already used up what we couldn't pay tax on. We've already used up 10. We already used up the 12, which means this is going to be taxed at 22%. Because again, we're now in the 22% bracket. So even though at a 62% or $62,000 salary, we just broke into just less than 300 bucks, broke into the 22% bracket, that means every new dollar has to be withheld and paid tax of 22% in order to, well, not be surprised. So again, if you get a $1,000 bonus, expect to lose 22, or well, I'm sorry, 220 bucks right off the bat, no questions asked, because, well, that's the bracket you're in now. Now, let's take it one step further. Now, I've already removed the $1,000 bonus out of this example just because, well, maybe the boss, just, you know, prematurely gave it to you. So again, we're only representing $62,000 worth of income, and again, no bonus. But let's say you won a car on a game show, so congratulations. Now, I know it's a, a dry erase marker, so bear with me. So again, you won yourself a car. Now, the thing is, we're now in the 22% tax bracket, but what's nice is the single uh, filing status um, threshold, or I'm sorry, range, is $47,151 through 100,525 is actually taxed at uh, 22%. Meaning the level of the amount of money that we would tax at 22% is roughly $53,000. So again, in this $62,000 example, we can make another $53,000-ish and still remain within the 22% tax bracket. But going back to the car, you won yourself a car, which obviously is a non-cash prize. The value of the car is $50,000. So the question becomes, are you going to be taxed on this car? And the answer is yes. Now, again, same situation. We've used up all of these other brackets. Again, so now we're in the 22%. We just said that the range of, again, a single filer for the 22% bracket is $53,000. So again, the next $53,000 that we make will be taxed at 22%. And we just won a car worth 50,000 bucks. Now, this is where it kind of gets kind of dystopian because that truck or car, excuse me, is going to be taxed at 22% on the value, which again, 22% on, I think I said this is worth $50,000 is, well, roughly about 10,000 bucks. Now, keep in mind, a car is a non-cash asset. So again, you win something that's non-cash but you have to pay tax in cash. And that creates, creates quite a bit of a gap that people experience when they win prizes. You win something that's non-cash and people usually have to sell that in order to pay the tax. Now they keep the remaining cash left over, but again, it's kind of, I don't know, it's kind of cheap to say, hey, here's a $50,000 car, congratulations. Oh, but um, you got to sell it in order to get $50,000 of cash, pay, you know, 22% on it and just pocket the remaining. So again, just a little tidbit of information there for you. Another thing I really want to highlight is now that we've established that if you are single in 2024 and you're going to file as a single person making $62,000, you are technically in the 22% tax bracket. You just got into it. So again, any dollar that you've earned above $62,000 is taxed at 22% in this case. 
Kind of like with that example I gave with the bonus and the, the vehicle that you want. If you make $62,000, you are in the 22% bracket, and every dollar that you earn, again, that $1,000 is going to be taxed 22%. That $50,000 car that you won, 22%. Now, what if the car was slightly nicer? Maybe it had, you know, a, a spoiler or a jet engine on it or whatever, but it was worth $55,000. Well, again, we learned that the range for, again, a single filer is about $53,000. Now, the vehicle that you want is 55,000 bucks. So we know that the majority of this vehicle in this in in instant is gonna be taxed at 22%, but just like we saw with all these other brackets, we're gonna have an amount that's left over and that's gonna jump to the next bracket, which is in this case, 24%, which again, I don't have printed up, but uh, I would hope by now you understand the, uh, the progress, the progression as again, you work your way up. But this leads to a very great question and very, um, very misunderstood thing when it comes to income taxes. You see, an individual making sixty-two thousand is now in the twenty-two percent tax bracket. But do they pay twenty-two percent on the full sixty-two thousand bucks? Well, obviously, no. Some of it is not taxed at all. Some of it is taxed at ten percent. A lot more was taxed at twelve percent, and very, 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 very little. Again, less than 300 bucks, I think, was taxed at 22%. And like I said, I've got a, I'm gonna have a running list of calculations, you know, while, as we're doing this. So again, your effective tax rate, which is actually what you pay, is not 22% because very little of it, like I said, and, and I keep repeating myself, is taxed at 22%. It's gonna be averaged, again, down because that's just how the law of averaging works. Your effective tax rate, which is what you actually pay out in taxes, will not be as high as the marginal tax rate you're in because, well, again, you've got some money taxed at 10%. You've got a little bit more tax at 12%. So right off the bat, this is probably looking at about, uh, let's just say, 11.5% for argument's sake. Now you get the 22%. Now that 11.5% example effective tax rate starts to climb up a little bit. And again, not much because, again, we don't have much here in the 22% tax bracket. Now, I'm curious if you ever learned something complicated like taxes just using toilet paper. But again, I'm hoping and praying that everything that I mentioned here makes sense. But again, this is exactly how our U.S. progressive tax system works. So again, I hope this was helpful. And well, if, if so, let me know and we'll see what the next video holds that I'd make. So thanks again.